From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Otto, the innkeeper, Herr Dollar. Oh, good. I was away from the desk for a few minutes and just received the message that you called. Look, Otto, I'm at the little hotel down in the village. If you're not planning to move out of the Kleibach Inn, I hope. No, no, listen. I want you to do me a favor. Of course. Have you seen Jeffrey Harris? The English gentleman? No. Then keep a sharp eye out for him. Oh. Yeah, and the minute he gets back to the inn, call me. But don't let him know you're calling me. Whatever you say, Herr Dollar. But is something wrong? Plenty. This man named Gruner I've been looking for. You have found him? I've found him, all right. Dead. What? And it looks like his killer is here at this hotel. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Clybox, Switzerland. To the Home Office Global Casualty, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the picture postcard matter. Expense account continued. The murder of Gruner meant that I had lost the one solid lead I had on the whole case. Unless, of course, I could round up whoever put him away. Item 10, $1 to the desk clerk for watching the rear entrance of the hotel in case the killer should try to get out that way. Well, what are you going to do, Johnny? Go upstairs and take a look. I'm coming with you. No, no, stay here. I won't. I'm coming with you. All right, I don't have time to argue. Now, tell me again just what happened, Elsa. Uh, You realized we were being followed along the street. You decided to wait in that alley, and I was to cut through to this street and go back to the inn. Yeah, yeah, go on. Well, when I got to the street, I heard a man cry out. Then I saw Gruner fall from an upstairs window. He was dead. He fell from a corner room? Yes. Well, that'd be this door over here. Okay. Get back against the wall, Elsa. All right. Be careful, Johnny. Yeah, yeah. Empty. Maybe one of the other rooms, Johnny. Yeah. Hey, hey. Somebody just locked up. That was down the hall. Yeah, come on. That room at the end. Get back, Elsa. gone. The window? Yeah. Oh, great. A fire escape. Uh Uh-oh. You see someone, Just a flash as he disappeared around the corner. Could you recognize him? There wasn't much light, but it looked like the big boy who jumped me back in Zurich. Then it was he who killed Gruner. Could be. And Gruner was my last lead to those stolen diamonds. You think that man who got away now has them? I don't know. If he does and tries to leave town, Inspector Honiger's man will pick him up at the railroad station. Well, let's go back to the inn. We did, but only because it meant being someplace where I could quietly sit down and think, try to put together and make sense out of what meager information I had. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized that I was starving. More coffee, Johnny? Hmm? No, no thanks, no. What's the matter, Johnny? Oh, what's the matter is I'm beat. The stolen diamonds. The stolen diamonds. Unless I can figure out the meaning of those picture postcards Gruner sent to Sebastian, I'm licked. And so far, I've drawn nothing but big blanks on them. Postcard? You didn't say anything to me about postcard. I know, Elsa. Well, look, you may as well know it. Right now, you're about my last hope. Uh, You claim you weren't involved in any of this, that you want to help me. Oh, yes, Johnny, and I mean it. Okay, here's your chance to prove it. How? Take a look at these postcards. They're all addressed to your dead pal, Sebastian. Mm -hmm. Sent to him by Gruner. That's right. A picture of the Clyback in here... And a picture of the ski hut on the ridge. Do they mean anything to you? Well, they are staying here at the inn, and I have seen the ski hut on the ridge. Beyond that, nothing. You're sure? Yes. What is it all about, Johnny? The postcards, I mean. Sebastian and Gruner were together in the diamond robbery back in Zurich. Then they split up. Gruner hid the diamonds and sent these postcards to Sebastian. They're supposed to be the key to the location of the diamonds. And now both Sebastian and Gruner are dead. Which means that if I can't figure out this key, I'll probably never recover those stones. You told me this morning you thought there were others after the diamonds. Yeah, and they probably knocked off Sebastian and Gruner trying to get them. These postcards, the inn and the ski hut. Have you searched this inn? As well as I could. And the ski hut? 
When I got there, the place had been ransacked. Somebody beat me to it. I saw Jeffrey Harris in the vicinity on my way up to the hut. The Englishman? Yeah. He could be my boy. Maybe whoever knocked off Gruner in the village was working for him. Maybe Mr. Harris already has the diamonds in. I hope to find out if and when he comes back here to the inn. I somehow doubt that he's found them, though. They went after Gruner after the ski hut was ransacked. And that would indicate they are still looking for them. Yes. The inn and the ski hut. Wait, Johnny. Perhaps the diamonds are somewhere on a line between the two places. I thought of that, but it doesn't work. You can't see the ski hut from here at the inn. A ridge cuts it off. And where on a line between the two? They're about five miles apart. I wonder if... Hold it, Elsa. What is it? Jeffrey Harris, just coming in. See you later, Elsa. Well, 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 it's the dollar chap. Yeah, that's right, Harris. The dollar chap. Enjoying your stay at Clyback, old man? Well, let's say it's been interesting. Delightful place, really. I'm a bit of a mountain climber, you know. I yeah, don't... I know. Oh, you do? Oh, I didn't think my reputation had spread that much. Oh, I'm really just an amateur, but it's great fun. You did some climbing today, I believe. Yes, matter of fact, I did. Splendid place of rock up there. It gave me quite a workout. And you were down in the village this evening? Oh, yes. I say, old chap, you, you seem to be rather an inquisitive sort. Why all the questions, huh? Well, this morning I got shot at up on the ridge. Uh, what's that? This evening a man was murdered in the village. Both times you were in the vicinity. Oh, oh now, look here, Dollar. Let's not be absurd, right? I, I, I'm sorry that someone was potting away at you this morning, but I assure you I had nothing to do with it, and I didn't even know about the murder in the village. Plus the fact you've been pretty interested in me ever since I arrived here at the inn. Yes, but I've explained all that. I thought at first that you might be my old friend Bunny Dollar from London. Look, let's quit talking about old Bunny Dollar and start talking about that rifle of yours with a telescopic sight. <laughs> we don't be ridiculous, old boy. I don't have any rifle. Well, I just happened to have found one in your closet today. I say, you are a snooper, aren't you? But you must have gotten to the wrong closet. I tell you, I don't own a rifle. It was there, all right, and it was your closet. Well, then somebody left it there by mistake. Now, look here, Dollar. I haven't the slightest idea what you're driving at, but I assure you, I am in no way involved. And I must say, I don't care for your attitude or behavior. Hey, to think I had you confused with old Bunny. Well, you're not in the least like him. You're prowling in my closet. I guess I drew a blank there. Uh, Elsa... Where did she... Hey, Dollar. Oh, Otto. Where did Elsa go? Why, I do not know. She was sitting there a few minutes ago. Perhaps she went up to her room. Yeah. Hey, Dollar, this man you were looking for, Gruner... I'm not looking for him anymore, Otto. Like I told you over the phone, he got himself killed in the village this evening. I know. And that is what made me think you might be interested in this. Oh, hey, another postcard. Where'd you get it? It arrived today. It was addressed to the man called Sebastian in care of my inn. That means Gruner didn't know Sebastian was dead. Hey, hey, this could be the missing part of the key. Key? A picture of the village square. Does that mean something to you, Herr Dollar? I'm sure it means something, all right. But I'm not sure what. I went to my room and put the three postcards side by side. The inn... A ski hut on the ridge in the village square. The trouble was I couldn't be sure this was all there was to the key. Maybe Gruner had planned to send more cards, but he wouldn't be sending any now. Yeah. Yeah, from any point of view, I was getting nowhere. Then I stopped cold. Point of view. I looked at the cards again. You couldn't see the ski hut from the inn, and you couldn't see the inn from the village. But maybe, just maybe, there was some point from which you could see all three. I went downstairs and outside. It was a moonlight night. I started walking slowly toward the village, keeping the inn in sight behind me. Finally, I came to a point in the road where I could see both the inn and the village square in the distance. But I still couldn't see the ski hut. There was a ridge in the way. I started cutting across a field. It looked like a little deserted farm. A shed loomed up in front of me, a small, broken-down barn. And then... Just as I got to the barn, the ski hut on the ridge came into view. I stopped and checked. Yeah? Yeah, I could see the inn, the village square, and the ski hut. And this was the one point from which the scenes on all three postcards were visible. This had to be it. I went inside. The barn was empty except for some straw in one corner. I ran my hands through it. And I pulled out a leather case. The moonlight streaming through the broken roof told me I finally found the uncut diamonds somebody outside. I froze against the wall in the shadow. He came in. I let him get close. Then I dove at him. 
I gave him a couple of the midsection and crumpled. I dragged him to his feet. No, let's, let's go off. Well, my old friend who jumped me back in Zurich. Who are you? Come on. No, no, don't. No, I, I am Anton. Your outfit was trying to get the diamonds away from Sebastian's boys, huh? Yes. When you jumped me in Zurich, you thought I had them. Then you followed me here to Kleibach. And you killed Gruner trying to make him talk. Okay, who are you working for? Spell it. No, nobody. I am working alone. Don't give me that. You haven't the brains to mastermind a deal like this. Now, who's the boss? I can't tell you. Open up, Anton. Oh. Start talking. That is enough, Herr Dollar. What? Otto. Stand very still. Well, so the little innkeeper is Anton's boss. You stupid fool, Anton. Yeah, well, what could I do, Otto? I, I didn't know he had had me approaching. One blunder after another. But I... I think I get it now, Otto. It was you who shot at me up at the ridge this morning. Then you planted the rifle in the Englishman's room. I realized after I had missed that perhaps it was just as well, darling. Sure, sure. You realized I might be able to help you. You couldn't figure out the location of the stones, although you had one of the postcards... But you knew I had the other two and might be able to figure out the three of them. Why not? So you gave me the third card, hoping I'd lead you to the diamonds. Which you very obligingly did. Give me the diamonds, Dollar. I will take them. Stand back, Anton. What? Huh? But Otto... Sure. You don't think he's really going to split with you, do you, Anton? What do you mean? Otto... Stay where you are, Anton. You have served your purpose. After all I have done for you. What? You stand back! Anton started for Otto who took his eyes off for a second. That's what I was waiting for. I dove at him just as his gun went off. Anton crumpled, and after a fist in his face, Otto did likewise. I knelt down and picked up his gun. All right, Otto, just hold it where you are. But my shoulder, I'm hurt. Don't worry, Anton. There's enough of you left to talk to the police. And you know, I got a hunch you're going to be a real cooperative witness. Expense account, 14th and final item, $678.50, transportation and incidentals home. Total expenses, $1,723 even. Remarks? Otto and Anton were turned over to police inspector Honiger. The diamonds are in safekeeping. About Otto. Well, greed is one of the seven deadly sins. It sure turned out to be the deadliest one for Otto. About Elsa? Well, uh... Please consider me available for any future assignments in Switzerland. End of report. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now here's our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week there's uranium, they say, in the Arizona hills. There's also a killer with three victims behind him. And he's looking for another. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Robert Reif, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Lucille Meredith, Victor Perrin, Forrest Lewis, Stan Jones, and Ben Wright. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>